What is up, guys? Welcome to the second episode of What the Fuck Is This? Our podcast, second episode of it. I'm here once again with Drew Barth. Drew. Thank you for having me. Drew, you guys uh, you guys remember Drew because last week we had to play Barbie's Dream House Party? Uh, I believe the operative term is we got to play. We had to play it. We were forced to play it. Uh, it was quite the game, and everyone who s decided to stay and watch us play it, <laughs> which you guys are all warriors in your own right, uh, we played the hell out of that game yeah we i would we say we it. we explored every single possible nook and cranny of that game seeing as how that is part of the game is exploring every single nook every and cranny. single room it makes you be like look how much of the game we made yeah <laughs> exactly see this game we exactly. made it <laughs> <laughs> check out this room go shake this thing <laughs> the barbie game was hello everybody you guys are great um the barbie game has been I think it, there's going to be. I don't, I'm not sure if there's going to be a game more challenging than this to try and put a positive spin on it because it was rough around almost all the edges. Well, and I, I felt like again there was no stone left unturned. We looked at absolutely every single and we replayed a few facet games too. Of, yeah, we did. I think it, that was the thing that kind of struck me a little bit was the brevity and length of the game itself. Whoa, 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 whoa. what brevity? Bre <laughs> You're gonna have to. <laughs> I can't be the only one who has no idea what that means. Oh, I'll turn in my $2 word for a $1 word. Shortness. Of the okay. Game. Ooh, there you go. Yeah. I understand what short is. <laughs> <laughs> I got that one down. <laughs> yeah, it was very short. So the the whole game, it's kind of weird. Like, it has a weird plot. It just drops you right into it. It drops you into it, but the house shuts you down. Like, it sounds like it should be a horror game because mm -hmm. Barbie's Dream House shuts you in and you have to play these games to get out. And then they have a robot, which is much like GLaDOS from Portal, which I swear is just a ripoff of GLaDOS with a hand. Yeah. He has a little bit more sass. Yeah, if you hadn't actually preempted by saying this was a Barbie game, if you would cut out the Barbie part and you just start it by saying you're trapped in a house and you have to solve these games to get out, it's Saw, but it basically saw. with a whole lot of pink. <laughs> but it, tons of pink lot and of giant pink lipstick everywhere. laying around. Yeah, the... the a dude playing a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> But that was that was it. That was I don't even know. Was he a boyfriend of another Barbie? You couldn't interact with him and get him to do anything else. He would just kind of play the same out of tune chords, and then you would just wander to a different part of the house. So it was rough. So we get we're stuck in the dream house, and then we have to, we learn that we need to play all these games to get out. And there's four Barbies. Uh, all races were represented. Not yes. all, not all of them. There's a lot more races than four. Uh, it was kind of like a, a Barbie Benetton ad. There was a little bit of everything. Benetton. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing coming here with all this <laughs> tenth grade level vocab? You know their brevity line of clothing. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it was so we get in. I'm trying to remember the first game we played. There was there was essentially three game mechanics mm -hmm. that there was because there was we had to catch stuff, uh, we had to throw stuff. We had to wash a dog. Mm -hmm. We washed the shit out of that dog. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it was a competition, which was weird, because why is there even a competition when all you had to do was play the games to get out? No idea. No idea. Yeah. It's, it's, so they can give you catty later? Uh, I guess so. That was my favorite part, was making up all the backstories and all the backbiting that was going on in between there was the various girls in the house. What was your favorite game that we played? Uh, I actually, I thought that the uh, the washing the dog thing was very reminiscent of like some of the cooking mama kind of things where it had like several different yeah. steps. It you reminded me of kind of Mario, Mario Party. Mario kind of, Party like, or like, uh, like face yep. type thing. Yeah, Mario Party or kind of like what is it, WarioWare. Was that one? WarioWare where, is a good one, With a whole yeah. bunch of little short games. Yeah, it kind of reminded me similar to that, yeah. That was good. I like the cupcake one, uh, especially because of the swerve at the end where they threw out all the evil black cupcakes. Oh, the black so just fuck up everyone else's pile. The blue shells came out. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah the Mario blue shells. <laughs> yeah. I wish that they had much more of a damaging fuck over the other players kind of thing to it. Because it would three. Yeah, it would it would take three cupcakes off and put them on your stack, which was cool. Like it was yeah, a good that was really nice. Kind of round at the end, but I like just how tall the stacks got. They would go out of screen. Yeah, there was uh, like you had no idea how much. I remember the one in the bottom right just. It was unbelievable how big it was because we were throwing black ones at it and it wasn't reducing at all. No, no, it she was, was just stomping. It us. was fully out of, out of the screen entirely. I actually, st it started to kind of remind me a little bit of when you would play like a long game of Mario Kart and you would have like a couple of the bots. Like one was programmed to just be really good and right there with you, and then there was one. I think it was the brunette in this one that she had some path finding issues and she couldn't really get. She couldn't do anything. At like, all. Even when we found stuff, it took her forever to she come would just by. Kind of bounce in the corner. And, so you had to find four. You had to explore each room 
So you get to choose the room, which was nice, and then it was a create your own story adventure, which mm-hmm. is good. So you, we could like go to the wardrobe, and then we all had to look for something, but we all could only like we could find something for the black Barbie or mm-hmm. find something for the brunette Barbie, mm-hmm. and then they would have to get it, and that's how you unlock this game. I feel like the dog. I'm trying to remember the other. The other ones are very forgettable. Uh, there, there was the catch the presents, uh, but I think oh, they were shoe boxes or yeah, something. Yeah, that one was yeah, it was kind of like a stack kind of thing. Then there was also the runway walk that you did. The runway walk. Where you had to back. pose along the way. I killed. Sure. That one. Yeah, you did. I think that one was like a very, 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 very slow dance dance revolution. Yes. Like yes. Someone could be the most stoned they've ever been and still 100% it. I think another thing that kept kind of throwing me for a loop was the completely arbitrary point system. So that you would get to the end of a round and you would like nailed all the poses. It's like you won with 53 something. Yeah. And then you would kill and the other person would have like 49 right behind <laughs> yeah. you. It was like rubber banding. They just wanted you guys to stay. Which, I mean, this is different than most of the games I feel like we're going to do uh, on this show. Because like th- this has an intended audience. Definitely. And, and we're kind of trying to find games that we're just like, well, who who is this for? Mm-hmm. Like the game we played with the room, like it's for a, a select, like this probably is a super fun game to play when you're a little girl. Oh, absolutely. And especially because the mini games themselves were pretty short, it probably works well for kids that have kind of a short attention span. You can only get them to like work on a part of it at a time. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you that there aren't too many like six year old girls who are going to sit down and marathon that game for like 90 minutes straight and just yeah, right? blow through every like single. Like we did, we 100% did it. We <laughs> platinum trophied. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, a lot of speed running of the Barbie Dream House. Uh, I do not see in the future for probably what their <laughs> target audience is. So this game was made by Little Orbit, uh, maker of like Kung Fu Panda games. Oh, ben cool. Ten games. So they kind of they also make Adventure Time games. So they have this child's like market cornered. Yeah. Uh, so it seems, and they. So I was going through Metacritic. I what I found to be the funniest part about this entire game is when I started doing research on it, because I immediately the other day was like, I wonder what it got on Metacritic, because it had to be terrible. (laughs) And it has a 73. It has a 73, which I went, it came out in 2013. I went on and I found the average score for every system. This Barbie game has a better score than the average Xbox One game, 360 game, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and PC. It's ridiculous. I'm 100%, 10% gamer. Did you hear about this gamer girl thing? No. Cliffy B, uh, this is off topic. They talked about it on the last one, but everyone's making jokes, so I want to let you oh, know. Oh, yes, please. I you. did do research. You jealous? <laughs> uh, Cliffy B, maker of Gears of War, called Olivia Munn a fake gamer girl. And then it kind of started this thing where like some people were like attacking for like Felicia Day. It was real. It was weird. So that's what I'm just letting you know people are getting into. That's what they're saying, the gamer girl. Oh, Someone gotcha. Someone Barbie's a fake gamer girl. <laughs> but far, Barbie is far from a fake gamer girl. I'm not sure if you see you threw down last week. <laughs> but the best part of this game, I think, is what came after was when we started playing the Flash games. Oh, because yeah. I think the Flash games were better. Yeah, and it was pretty. It was pretty fascinating. All kinds like the the culture shift between the Flash games and like the Barbie house was seemed much more rooted in like old school kind of Barbie. Let's put on some clothes and let's let's look make cakes for the boys. And then like immediately you went to the Flash game and it was like Barbie loves BMX. And then, yeah. Like, yeah. she tears up a half pipe on a snowboard. She completely wrecks this half pipe. Yeah, it was I liked that you could chain you you had a closet installed in every room and you also had a wardrobe within the wardrobe. So in the wardrobe room there also is a closet. So you can always change uh, that was fun. Cus- level of customization was quite good. Yes, it was very Barbie Inception. It was kind of clothes within a within clothes, clothes. within clothes. And I love that the uh, the Glados giant robot thing turned out to just be the closet. Yeah, like he was in like control that was of the, the closet. central intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> and again, the giant like foreboding metal clamp down airlock doors in between each room. Uh, that seemed to me when Barbie was setting up her dream house. I don't imagine that she put that into the architectural. She was like, I'm going to need this to be a giant panic room. Yes, absolutely. Because I'm a plastic doll. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so like a giant thought for my dog there. It would have made more sense shut down if the over panic there. room was like a flap that came over and it like barely <laughs> pressed in. It was just plastic. So like if they pushed hard enough, they could crawl out like an actual Barbie dream house. I want that realistic of a Barbie dream house. Or maybe the ma- the ultimate escape plan is like they put two keys and just like hit this giant pink button and the whole front of the house opens up <laughs> opens and then everybody open. can just jump straight off of whatever floor they're on. And they're like, oh, good, we're free. <laughs> awesome. That's how you escape a fire in a Barbie dream house. It's straight out the front. I'm trying to think. I, I, have, I have my list of favorite things. I said that one of my favorite parts of this was that this game got me drunk because I went home and drank a bunch of whiskey afterwards. I'm not sure if that was related. I think it had something to do with it. 
Uh, you said outfits galore, giant makeup tools. I did like that. Yes. There was just giant makeup tools all around. Yeah, when you had to go to like kind of the, was it the wardrobe? Was it the kind of primping source of room? It was supposed to be all centered around makeup. And instead of having, then you had that makeup tutorial where you did, where it was also kind of. Yeah, you had to do the makeup. Yeah, kind of like the dog thing. You had to do like individual, like style. You had to do the eyes and the lips. And The one thing I found interesting is Barbie recently has kind of shifted from what this game is representing, like to kind of more like being proud to be a woman with yeah. this feminist movement. Like, and it feel like, like, I feel like if this game, even though it was only made three years ago, I feel like if this game was made today. There might be a backlash. I don't I know. I think so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially if you had a bunch of young women that have, you know, their young daughters and they want to get them to play a game with some really positive role models from like a female perspective. Mm -hmm. And like the entire game is basically like catch all the presents, wash the dogs, and pick <laughs> put on out, your makeup. Put on your makeup. Hey, guess what? There's tons of clothes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, it's like, where's the room where I get ready to go to school? <laughs> oh. What school? <laughs> yeah. But it's every room. <laughs> You can never leave this house. It was also made by all men. Yeah, you're right, Geek of Oz. That's it true. It clearly was. And we, when we, we saw went the credits. through the credits, yeah. there was like one female <laughs> name. And I wish I could remember what her position was. Because it wasn't anything to do with making the I game. think it was head of catering. <laughs> yeah, of course. Because there was something where they'd be like, ah, and they're like, no, no, no. Ah, no Shut no. up, Kathy. I think they had like four guys with the last name Simmons or something. That were. It was like this one family of dudes. They're like, look, if we're going to make one thing, we're going to do it right. <laughs> We're gonna come together as a family. We're gonna bury the ha bury the hatchet. Remember we're put when we were children, together. sixty years ago, <laughs> and all women were good for were cooking and looking good. Let's make a game in twenty thirteen that perpetuates that. Mm -hmm. That's how I felt the game came off. Let's yeah. the also when I got off topic because I did research. Uh, horse, someone said horse simulator. <laughs> <laughs> That's Soul Dan again. Yeah, Soul Dan is all over this place. Yeah. He was the MVP last week. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, oh, when I was doing research, the, the, I talked about how Metacritic, on Steam, you guys, there's over 360 reviews of this game, and it's almost five stars. It's almost five stars. And I decided I'd take a couple of my favorite reviews from Steam, uh, because not only does it show you the game hours logged, it gives you a nice little review. And I'm going to read a few, and I'm going to have Drew read a few as well. Let me get this <laughs> to zoom in so it's a little bit bigger easier to read all right i'll do the first one this review is from blue dog blue dog has 5950.3 game hours logged into barbie's dream house party uh and he says been playing it a bit i'm still stuck at the first level i can't decide what panties to wear and that was the first that's the the best review on their rating system that's number one you want to read number two i was trying to do a little bit of mental math that's like 200 days Day, real days over. We, I can do real math. Oh boy. Let's see how close you are because that amount of mental math. 50, 59, 50. Divided by 24. Divided by 24 because that's how many hours are in a day for people who are listening. 257, 47 days divided by 365 equals 70% of a year. That's a lot of time. I think that's fake. I think that. I think, I think that fake. might be. A part of me how really. How do you trick the Steam? Is wait maybe this is total games? Oh, that could be. That could be total hours logged. Yeah, that's possible. Someone, uh, you I guys like are probably going to correct us on Steam. Yeah, but if you look at a Steam know. review, I'm, I'm really, guessing. I'm just pretending that the dream is alive, and it actually is five. And he, Blue Dog, is just still sitting here racking up. <laughs> like it's, right now, he's playing it right now. It's gone through so. It, it has gone so deeper than just the game for Blue Dog that now he's starting to like extrapolate like mathematical theorems and philosophical. <laughs> insights from it uh let's see we have a review from uh tyrone tyrone two two words <laughs> titanium roni uh with 3379.6 game hours log again could be cumulative but i think it's just that one uh and he said let's start with the pro oh no wait great game to invite little girls around to play on <laughs> That's how Tyrone got on a list. I think that was the third <laughs> um, best reviewed review that we had. 
This one's a long one, guys, so strap in. This one I want to read specifically because it's so long and so ridiculous. This is actually probably is the best review they have, in my opinion. This review is from KP. Uh, ironically, he has 69 game hours logged. Uh, I can't. That has to be on purpose. And it sounds like a lot of people are saying that you can. You actually have to be in that game to log those hours, but it sounds like a lot of people could just kind of alt-tab out of it or just minimize and let it run in the background just as a way of just... For okay, no, so yeah. this guy... But that's commitment to a joke, though. That is so much respect. So he, <laughs> think about that. So even, so cut that in half. So uh -huh. that's 270 days yes. times two is 540 days. Yes. Uh, if you say you're doing it 12 hours a day. Yeah. So he, for a year and a half. Has just been opening up the Barbie game and let it run in the background. God damn, Blue Dog. Man, I thought I was, I thought I was devoted to humor, but that is impressive. Yeah, that is unbelievable. Even Tyrone, let's, let's not shit on Tyrone. He did 3,300 3, hours. I'll bet Blue Dog is the kind of guy who has a tattoo of the words your name on his ass. <laughs> just because he's so, he just loves to make those jokes. <laughs> this one's from KP with 69 game hours logged. This one's a long one. Strap in. Let's start with the pros. This game is awesome. Easily 10 out of 10 and hard on the soft hard scale. Parentheses, by the way, this game gets me hard. Uh, the amount of mini games <laughs> you can play is outstanding. Come on, computer. Uh, is outstanding. The amount of customization with the in-style salon is purely amazing. Parentheses. Personally, I love to wear all pink. And parentheses. I love it how I can get to play boyfriend simulator within the game. It really helps me cope with the struggles of finding a boyfriend myself. Parentheses. 53 slash male slash Brisbane. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw that in there. He's a 53-year-old lonely man in Brisbane. The cons. Here's the cons. Uh, I only have two complaints with this game, and that is such a difficult choice whether to wear the pink or the purple panty and bra set. And that's of a good one. I found. I didn't even. I didn't think they had bra sets. No, it took us they a while to even unlock the swimsuits. Yeah, which essentially is a bra. That's pretty much. The yeah, same. it's the exact same thing. The other one is upon completing the game, I was expecting to be able to get Barbie and Ken to canoodle. Canoodle, yeah. What four words? Brevity. Four letters. I think it's brevity. But sadly, I was disappointed. I was really expecting a Barbie porma, porno within the customized pimp house. All in all, huh. plus one for getting me hard, plus one for helping me cope with my life. Negative one, I wanted more sexual acts. <laughs> Overall, 10 out of 10 would recommend to anyone who wants to get hard and have a lot of fun. <laughs> and then I think you put this one in. Oh, yeah. It was a review from Lorvato, who has three game hours logged. Uh, his comment was, uh, uh, I'm quite sure. I think you I think can it's say bitches. It. Yeah. Uh, bitches threw dirty cupcakes at me in the last 10 seconds. Now I understand why women can't have nice things. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord Votto. Yeah, so that game, man. It, it is interesting. I, I'm wondering what it's like if you sit down and you're a game developer and you need to create a game that is entirely around one very particular brand and is really targeted at a very specific demographic. And, and kind one of very particular stereotype, too. Yeah. I think that shows to the stereotype how much you can do with it, which yeah. is nothing. Yes. Which is nothing. Man, that game was bad. I, I wonder how many times the developers were like, so what about this? What if we had, like, Barbie, but she's doing, like, a correspondence course? Like, it's like, that's really not on brand. Right? We, we need yeah. more. Now, unless the correspondence is for making cookies. Then, uh, yeah, what about, really what about if she's a Girl Scout who sells cookies and then she makes an empire? And you're like, no, 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 no. We need them to make the cookies. She can't be the person who peddles them out. She needs to be the person who creates the cookies. She's a woman. That's I felt. That's like the vibe I got from this game. Yeah, absolutely. I I looked at it and I thought this could turn into just a really glamorous. Like drug den. Like this could be a really great. You could have them like all kind of cooking in different houses. You could have rooms. You could have different drugs. Kind of mean maybe mm -hmm. different places for export. That just seems like a natural segue for me. I mean, there's so many. There, the house is so big. Mm. I feel like you could. Obviously, if police show up, lockdown. Close lockdown all the mode. Yeah, you're good. You're fine. That's like a. Can't think of his name. Cartel guy. El Chapo. El Chapo. That's some in a Chapo house. I good. knew if we if we talked long enough about Barbie's dream house, El Chapo would come up. At yeah, some point that, 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 it's actually in the notes. If you look right here, <laughs> tie in El Chapo somehow. And it was in the spe special thanks at the end of the game as well. <laughs> yeah, thanks to El Chapo for inspiring <laughs> us. <laughs> the Flash games were uh, were pretty interesting as well. I don't remember really sitting down and playing a bunch of Flash games in a while. 
It's but. been a while for me too. Yeah. After you left, they had me play this game that I wanted to cover called the Impossible Quiz. Have you mm. seen this thing? No. Mm -mm. I might just bring it up and have you work on it while I talk about it because it is impossible. It is a game where I'm going to include it because it was part of the stream. Hopefully, that's fine with Zach. Also, this is all Zach's fault that we had to play this Barbie game. <laughs> Specifically, it's also Anna's fault for giving it to us. We were going to play Shaq Fu, and then he said no Shaq Fu, and then he did a vote, and you fine people voted for Sandwich Simulator 2016. Mm. And then we ended up doing a game that we decided we weren't going to do because... Uh, whoever suggested knows the reason why we didn't do that game. I'm not sure if I should say it on air, so I won't. And now we're with Barbie. And this is all their faults. They should have trusted me with Shaq Fu. They trusted me with... Actually, no, they told me about this game. They're trusting me next week. Next week, I will, I'll will announce what we're doing next week at the end of What the Fuck Is This. So check this out. Play this game. Impossible Quiz is a game where it's just impossible. Shaq Fu was repetitive, but so was Barbie's Dream House Party. Yeah, and actually, uh, a lot of people don't realize that Shaq Fu was the beginning of a long martial arts series with Shaquille O'Neal. There was Shaq Krav Maga that came after that. <laughs> uh, Shaq Jiu Jitsu. Sh Shaq Muay Thai. Yeah, Shaq, Mu Shaq Muay Thai was not bad. The Shaq Tai Chi one was more of just, it was a connect game. It was just a lot of posing. And <laughs> while also going, oh, 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 oh this is hard. So I start this, have a hard time this is a possible quiz. If you guys want to see it, you literally just Google impossible quiz. I'm going to turn the, the sound off on this bad boy real quick, though. So it starts off, it says, how many holes in a polo? And you, it's multiple choice. I'm going to have Drew, I'm going to have you guys watch Drew get upset. How many holes in a polo? I'm going to go with two. How did I not turn that off? I don't know, but you somehow even made a ladder. Here, let's, let's do this. Boom. There we go. Uh, it's impossible. I played it for probably 30, 40 minutes. Oh, after. no, wait. The answer's four. Right. You got to do this. You got it. Yep. How do you know that answer? Well, I don't even know what that means. So I think if it was a polo shirt, it's referring to the two buttonholes, and that's kind of what it's a, the first thought. But there's actually four. Well, actually, it would be six because there'd be the neck hole and the bottom. I was hole about to say you're so well. smart, but I'm not going to say it now because you realize. Oh, can a match box? Uh, no, but can a, a tin can. Box? You're right. And then this one is answer I this really, question backwards. It intentionally messes with you. I'm going to see if anyone here on chat has actually played it. Okay. Click the I answer. want you to play. You know the game I want you to play, Kirby, but it's not a what the fuck. It's just an awesome one. I hope it's WWE 2K16. Is there... I wait, it, Sol Dan, you're saying that Anna chose the wrong Barbie game. Is there another Barbie game we should play that I will not ever play? But I want to know. You seem like you got some sweet John Romero. Oh, I don't know who John Romero is. So yeah, this Impossible game, I got 32 questions into it. It took me like... 20, 30 minutes. I guess it's like a hundred some questions long, but you only get three lives. Wait a second. Oh, wait, click the answer. See, that ah. took me forever. So they have a question <laughs> where it says click the answer and then all the options are out of order, but you actually literally have to click where it says click the answer. It's craziness. Put the mouse here. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's working. Can you click it? My computer sucks. I'm not sure if you could. Now don't yeah. touch the blue. It's Adele. It's not Adele. Adele is beautiful, but Adele. Boom. See, it's a fun It's a Oh, fun this is fascinating. Yeah, so it's just a mind fuck, really. What is the square root of onion? What is? Well, that one's easy. Uh, square root of onion? It's shallots, come on. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, it has to the be The answer is really big. Oh, big I took answer. the most enjoyment out of Impossible Quiz. I definitely recommend you guys checking out Impossible Quiz. Barbie, on the other hand... Um, I think you should get it if you have a daughter that you want to teach stereotypes that will put women back. Oh, most, most definitely. <laughs> like if, you, if, that's who, if that's your bag, do it. But if not, let's see what Soul Dan says. He joined Barbie and her sisters Skipper, Stacy, and Chelsea as they solve clues to find a rescue lost puppy. Oh, rescue, yeah, Barbie rescue puppy. I've actually seen that. Puppy, Barbie and her, I don't think it's called Barbie and her sisters puppy rescue. I think that's Hannah and her sisters, yeah. which was a film from the 80s with uh, Michael Caine. So all in all, we played a game that was very hard for two grown men <laughs> to, <laughs> it was, it to was play. It was surprisingly difficult. Actually, the, the number one thing that really surprised me were some of the parts of the game that felt there was such little hand-holding and like tutorial getting it going that if I were a six-year-old girl, I, I don't know, maybe I just would play a game differently. But the fact that like the game started and you were just like standing there, there was no tutorial. It's like, all right, go. It was just kind of like you stand in the middle of the house. It's like, it's like when you launch and fall out. Yeah. Like you're out of the vault. 
<laughs> Go. That's, see, that's how I would love there. That's how I would love for the Barbie game to begin. Just like kind of like a shot of her like reaching out and like there's like sunshine and she like looks over. She's like waking up in her bed. It's a very first person kind of thing. That would be awesome. That would be good. What are your major takeaways? What do you think? What are the things you loved the most? So let's let's do it in conclusion and wrap up here. Uh, maybe even it might be that it's the fact that like it just drops you and it's like just go. There's no kind of tedious tutorial to work your way through. It's just like fucking. It makes take you think off. it's a sandbox, yes. but it's totally not. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, Ooh, it sends sandbox. so many mixed signals to you. <laughs> the one part there was a level of dread that I felt after we played the when we started playing the fourth game because I was like, oh, this is just the same three games. Like yeah, and mechanic wise, yeah. I was like, I was like, I always thought, I was like, well, at least we'll do that. But it was like, no, the dog thing was the same as the makeup thing. Mm-hmm. The cupcake thing was the same as the. You were were you throwing? Oh, bolts? Yeah, this, uh, giant gears that were popping and out then of bubbles the bubbles were the bubbles were pretty cool. Yeah, I was actually really concerned about that laundry room because it seemed to have four giant holes that could open up in the ground where like these massive gears were being thrown out of what so whatever sort of cleaning devices they had there. It was terrifying. I don't have. I'm not able to click on my computer here. This is just mine. But somebody said, Vashanel said, oh, Aaron, uh, it was Amanda Hall who's in the credits oh. as support staff. Ah. Like making the medic of a game a woman. <laughs> 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 yeah, all in all, pretty rough game. Um, it was very bright. Oh, like, yeah. Like if you didn't have, I say like if the power's out, in Seattle, power just recently went out. If you didn't have power, but you wanted to have light. Sure. And you had a full laptop battery. Yes. I think you just pop that bad boy open. Oh, most certainly. Go to the Barbie game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then you could just, light your you, entire house with pink, and uh, it would be, and it would still give you a headache. Oh, definitely. You could put it in the living room, go to bed, and it would still just be burning through your eyelids. My rods and cones were scrambled for a good two hours after you're staring <laughs> at that screen. <laughs> also, I still can't get the music out of my head. It was just going for it was a horrifying. long time. It was yeah. horrifying. Mm-hmm. But now I feel strangely compelled to buy Bob Barbie products. I don't know what that is. Do it. It worked then. Yeah, I guess so. All right. I think that'll wrap us up here. I think I think we've set our piece. I think I'm ready to move on. I don't know if I could say any more about the Barbie <laughs> yeah. out. I think I'm ready to now block this out of my memory uh-huh. and never have to do this again and never hear Barbie. I don't think I can look at Barbies anymore. Well, this is actually gr- something I frequently do. This is a great point for me to jump into my fan fiction about the Barbie Dreamhouse that I'm going to be starting up my own podcast about. Uh, you heard it here first. Breaking news. Drew Barth. <laughs> starting a new fan fiction of the Barbie Dream House. <laughs> well, we have all these ideas now. Oh, yeah. It's called B-Fic. It's a new thing. It's well, you a, can have El Chapo in it. B-Fanfic. Yeah. B-Fanfic. Fan fiction's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the one where Skipper goes and actually joins the Navy, becomes a Skipper. She becomes Skipper Skipper. Uh, okay. It's kind of a... Are you going to also have a little bit of friend fiction? A little bit. Absolutely. <laughs> friend, yeah. Oh, I'm not going to give fiction. them names, though. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, go. No, it's just going to be I'll Barbie read referring to me. It's like, hey, Burdette girl, come over here. I'm biting your style. <laughs> <laughs> awesome well you guys we're gonna get started uh follow drew on twitter reach out to him through social media he's wonderful you'll probably be seeing him here again in a little bit also and then we're about to go i'm gonna run over uh we have scott lossie who's another great seattle comic oh, and we great. are gonna be playing a charles barkley game that i cannot wait to play awesome it's gonna be very very fun. oh that sounds fantastic thank you guys so much Thanks we'll see you on. on the stream cheers we're done <laughs>